All that energy is fed by cosmic rays. You can't modify time without modifying gravity. So no, the only thing that can be happening is that it changes our perception. Hello, greetings, finally, I am going to release this video, about the cosmic sensor of Patrick Flanagan that we manufacture, I wanted to make a single video, but I think it will be 3, or 4, because the information is huge, and there is much to synthesize, this is the first part, where I will explain it in general, from a brief history of Patrick Flanagan's life, who is the creator, to how he integrated the discovery, and how the invention was done, how he systematized it. Before starting, I want to make a kind of tribute, and show our gratitude to Patrick Flanagan. He unfortunately passed away last December in Ecuador. He had already been sick for more than a year. He was recovering. It seemed that he was fully recovered and then he relapsed, until he unfortunately passed away. This video is a great recognition from our part for all his work and for all the support he gave us. As you know we talked to him by phone. There was open communication with me Tiantra, and the devices were endorsed by him and tested. He gave him the approval, because much of this technology has been based on what he studied, worked, and invented. He was a very sickly child and he even suffered a brain poisoning of mercury in the water. I do not remember why it was, but he was poisoned quite strongly, and from there he began to be interested in how to heal himself, in his words he says that there are no cures at all, there are no cures for anything, therefore, this is not the cure for any disease, because for him the body is the only one capable of healing itself, just as in everything we are responsible for our own health, everything the body needs, are certain raw materials to work, he says that the secret is, to be happy, eat well and exercise, there was a fourth one that I do not remember right now what it is, but it is like his way to stay healthy. After he begins to be interested in healing, he begins to see a lot of Bovis work about the Great Giza Pyramid, and he realizes that within his studies, there is a curious story in which, in a garbage can, there were many dead animals, but a lot of them. Then it occurred to them to ask why there were so many dead animals. What was happening? They asked why there were so many dead animals. What was going on? if they had been fumigated or some reason why they were there, and it turns out that, no, that apparently the animals get lost inside the pyramid and die, but they never rot, they remain mummified, then this caused an interest in both Bovis, and later Patrick Flanagan to investigate, because there was no chemical element, the theory is that they go in, they get lost, they starve to death and do not decompose, they remain whole, and after this, he also realized that this happened since thousands of years ago, beside this, he realizes that, it is used a lot, especially by the Egyptians, jewelry, for protection, to contact higher planes, there was a lot of belief in that, and then he was curious about why, because a civilization that had made such an advanced construction, could not be totally superstitious, there had to be a somewhat valid basis, maybe not scientific, but valid, why to use those necklaces, and then he began to test people with his own amulets, where he measured their energy, there are acupuncture meters that what they do is measure the potential difference between two points, because for acupuncture medic, the nervous system channels are connected and have to be balanced, if from one side there is less energy than the other side, then there is an imbalance, he began to measure that, and he realized that, with certain amulets, people had that balance on their body, or that transmission of energy was increased. What you should also know is that everything, even the pyramid is built in the famous golden ratio, that is based on pi and phi. More than anything in phi, the curious thing, is that not only the precision of the construction of the pyramid, but that the golden ratio coincides with everything that the universe has. He began to investigate the auric spirals, what he realized is that it is the same as the rule of the right hand, goes according to physics, and electromagnetism, and the theory of vectors, if the spiral turns this way, the energy goes towards you, and if the spiral turns that way, towards the other side, towards the opposite side of the hands of the clock, the energy goes out, what we are looking for, 
is a balance. We do not want all the energy to enter, including the electromagnetic energy of the environment, nor do we want all the energy to come out. Your energy of your energetic system and your nervous system, we do not want to drain you. What he designs, if you look at the plate, is a double spiral, where there is a movement to one side and the other, and what he sought is to maintain the balance in golden ratio. His research is based on the vital energy, the same energy that Wilhelm Reich investigated and defined as orgone energy, which was based on the energy of orgasm. Patrick Flanagan was investigating from ancient cultures, where it was already seen that they believed in that energy, prana, chi, and tumo, for example, the Tibetan monks use Tumo energy to generate a lot of heat, and it is said that they can even melt the ice around them. One of their practices is to go to the snow to spend I do not remember how long and create the heat by himself. It has to do with meditation, focus and visualize, precisely the energetic channels, the nerves, the nervous system, expand them in the mind and create more heat. What Flanagan realized among several of the effects of the same pyramid of Giza and any pyramid with those proportions is that most of the people who were inside the pyramid the most sensitive had a sensation of heat compared to the tumo or also tingling in the hands. And it is curious because we have a testimony. Let's see if that client sees us that he felt the device is very strong. He felt that his hands were vibrating, that type of energy that the pyramid generates is due to its golden ratio proportion, that in all these devices we try to maintain, and especially in Patrick Flanagan's sensor, what this sensor does is to have the same effects as a pyramid with that golden ratio. There is another experiment that can be done, but it has to be with a lot of control with people who can concentrate very well. In this experiment you put exactly in the solar plexus a compass. This experiment was done by Patrick Flanagan. With the compass on the solar plexus, he generated pain and when he reached a point in the pain or the emotional reaction of the person because he remarked a lot about that it was an emotional reaction, the compass moved. What he is demonstrating is that there is a change in the magnetic field of your body. He also discovered that we have a static electric field and a magnetic field just like the Earth. We are all like fractals of the same creation of the universe. That is why we recommend that you bring it in the solar plexus, or as close to the solar plexus possible. Precisely, in electronics it is said that the solar plexus is the most vulnerable point for a strong electric discharge to alter your nervous system. In fact, there are some bands used by people who are in transmission towers, especially in the highest points, where there is a very large potential difference to protect themselves from some discharges that can reach their arms but not enter through the solar plexus because they can kill them, can alter their heart, can give them a cardiac arrest. There is a reverse comparison, it is our energetic center. We have that vulnerable part but it is also a very strong center of magnetism, because that same test was performed in other different parts of the body and it did not represent that change of polarity in the compass. If we observe a diagram of the nervous system of anatomy, we see that there is a knot here, where all the nerves join, which will direct the nervous system. A magnetic field can alter it. We live surrounded by electromagnetism at all time. Flanagan talks about being inside the houses, because of the structure that is made of metal. It is a kind of Faraday cage effect, not as strong, but blocking natural radiation, and many of these effects can be measured. Flanagan did several experiments and realized that if the measurements were made inside a building did not have as much result, as if they were made outside, there is a blockage to be enclosed in a metal cage, because all buildings have rods, and alter that natural order of electromagnetism that is beneficial to us. These devices by having a coil, are also generating a natural electromagnetic field feeding on the radiation that is in your room or your house, so it is always good to have at least one with you, or have a pyramid, or something else that has this type of effect, because what it will be doing, is to maintain that potential difference or that magnetic field, that is helping you, that is being beneficial for you, adequate for you, 
And not only that type of electromagnetic radiation or light that we see, we are already talking about issues of cosmic ray interaction and a range of the spectrum that we do not see. We have to consider that reality goes beyond what our senses see. We see 0.1% of light, the rest 99.99% we do not see. It is present here, but we do not see it. On planet Earth, there is a natural potential difference. If we go to practically the highest inside the atmosphere, we have 400,000 volts and below we have zero. In fact, the Earth is charged with negative ions. This is one of the energies that Tesla wanted to take advantage of to generate a type of free energy. Use that potential difference. We see that in another video, the Earth is charged with negative charge and the air as there is a higher positive potential. In fact, that is why the thunder, the lightning, always go from the surface of the Earth upwards. If you record it in slow motion, or if you watch it carefully, they do not fall from the clouds. They leave the Earth and go upwards because the electric current always goes from the negative pole to the positive pole. That is always its direction in the electric current. So that is the natural structure of the Earth where it has a potential difference. And in fact, he talks about there are 300 lightning bolts always active on the planet. He believes that it is a kind of regulator. There is also a magnetic field there. It is not being generated. He believes that all this energy is fed by cosmic rays. He measured the frequencies of the Earth based on that magnetic field and in that difference of potential that are present. And he realized that the normal radiations go from zero to 100 Hertz maximum but that the most predominant are between 8 and 16 Hertz. It is no coincidence that our brain in the mental states are in that range between 8 and 16 Hertz. We are creating this reality on this planet. And for that reason, it is in those frequencies. But well, that is a matter of beliefs. The point here is that there is an interaction between the human being and the frequency of the Earth that oscillates in those ranges the internal frequency not the frequency of the object itself, and that being far away from nature, or locked in a cage, as I said in a building where we are electromagnetically isolated from what is natural, and besides we add electrical appliances like Wi-Fi or 5G that vibrate at much higher frequencies, then we are disconnected from that natural frequency. The Dr. Flanagan device is also designed to have that kind of Fibonacci natural frequencies in its small fractals. This is a fractal and spiral design. Another point is that, for example, this model that we have, which is only the plate, Flanagan gives it a duration of three years. After three years, you'll have to change it because it already lost its vibration. We always recommend you more the one with the coil because the coil keeps the energy flow constantly moving there and it does not have an expiration date unless it breaks or sometimes the vibration is so high that it crashes inside going back to the ancestral matters where we talked about prana or that type of energy of the subtle or energetic body we relate it in this case to that electrostatic field that the earth has where i tell you that there is a potential difference of up to 400,000 volts and we realize that oxygen has a negative charge and carbon dioxide has a positive charge. That is why it oxidizes us more or carbon dioxide affects us more. And we talk about the fact that oxygen, apart from nourishing our body, our veins of energy, or this type of reaction that we make, it feeds us that negative charge energetically because our whole brain, our whole body is an electromagnetic device in fact, there is an interview that is made where Flanagan talks about John C. Lilly, who worked together for the naval force, and they were investigating a lot the dolphins, their behaviors, and especially the question of the sonar, and they realized, for some reason among their experiments, that the frequency of 60 Hertz deactivates all the defense of the conscious to discern. It is curious that now, the entire electrical network of our homes works at 60 Hertz, precisely at the frequency of the Lily wave. You can search in Google Lily wave and you will see more information about it. Also in the screens, 
the frequency in which the sweeping of points is happening. Both the kinescope ones, and the new LED ones. The operation of these screens is at 60 Hz. Then, we are talking about that we are in a network where they are disabling us that power to discern. That is a theory that Flanagan endorsed a lot, that he was concerned about. These devices are also working to block this type of affections. Because what it does is to prevent that radiation, which is at a certain frequency, whether it is 60 Hz, which is low, or very high, that affects the most prone, the most vulnerable, the solar plexus, and modifies our nervous system, and therefore our brain, then what it does is transmute, modify that effect, and is charged with electrons, generating a biomagnetic current, which I explain in other videos, and then the condition in your body is different, and it is not harmful, even, you are now in connection with the universe, because everything is in the golden ratio. Flanagan began to do many experiments, making cardboard pyramids, because he realized that the pure figure towards something, he does not conclude why. He only says that there is a kind of interaction with the magnetic fields of the earth, because the pyramid, and all the general pyramids are aligned with the magnetic poles of the earth, with a very very low error, and he begins to make experiments with food, for example, he takes a piece of meat, he puts it in the pyramid, and the other one he leaves outside the pyramid. It turns out that the one in the pyramid does not decompose and the one outside decomposes. He does it also with vegetables, with flowers, and he notices that the disintegration inside the pyramid is less than outside. Later he realizes that only the pure structure works, that it does not have to be closed with walls, but that the pure structure of golden proportion generates that type of effects in the individuals. He even narrates that a friend of his, you uses a pyramid and the cat began to like being there, and from being carnivorous, he became a vegetarian, he stopped eating meat, because maybe it was not doing good to the animal, and also to another cat, and to his dog, he says that they stop eating meat and start being vegetarian, inside the pyramid in the royal chamber, in the chamber of King Bovis defines, that is where the effect happens, where the animals are mummified, Flanagan realizes that it is in the whole pyramid, not precisely there, that the effect is greater there, but the whole pyramid has that effect of preserving life, in reality, it is that they are nourishing him with that vital energy chi, prana, orgone, to the organic matter, and it is maintaining it, without decomposing, the ideal of having a pyramid is that you align it with the magnetic field of the earth, or you create with two magnets in a magnetic field, bringing your necklace here with you, you are a magnetic field, and you are feeding, and you are improving the device. The ideal is to always carry it with you. There is also another test that we want to do that is with the galvanic register of the skin, where you connect plants to this device, and you will see a reaction. There is even an experiment that the Mythbusters do, where the person pulls a leaf, pulls a leaf, pulls another leaf to a plant and they analyze the reaction that the plant has when they hurt it, and then the plant, and not only that plant, but all the others that are around, have an electrical reaction when that person approaches, they feel fear, and they feel the fear of being attacked, of being hurt, and there is another one that is more debatable, but interesting, in which the person concentrates a lot and thinks about burning the plant, and also has a reaction, then the plants are already interacting there, in a quantum field of thought, as they do not have a nervous system. Then they are detecting that energy, by another means, we want to do the test with the devices to see what effect it has, it is a test that Flanagan already did with this sensor, it is already tested, but we want to do it with all the devices, because I am sure that there will be an effect, and that the plants will start to teach us more about this energy, and what will be the difference between one model and another. Another test that Flanagan makes of the effects of the pyramid, is to measure the dielectric constant of the skin, this is the resistance of the skin to allow the electrical flow, normally it is said that a person usually has 250,000 ohms of resistance, there is no favorable electrical flow, 
therefore there is no electrostatic connection with the earth, when he puts that person with the effects of the pyramid, whether it is the sensor, or a pyramid, what he detects is that this resistance, this dielectric constant goes down to 1500 ohm, it goes down a lot, we know that it regulates you, and keeps you less resistant to this interaction, there is also a lot of talks that the razors sharpen, or lose their edge less quickly in a pyramid, just like with the sensor, you can put one in the back and every time you use it, it will last longer. It is still debated is that the pointed structure of the razor has an interaction with the air with positive ions, and having the device near, what it does is to avoid that interaction of oxidation, and makes the razor last longer, it is not that it recovers its edge but it lasts longer, that's what I think, although Flanagan does talk about recovering its edge, maybe there is a question of anti-oxidation. Another effect is, that it induces alpha states of the brain, which helps in meditation, having it nearby, or having it hanging when you are meditating, helps you to enter a trance more easily, because it induces that alpha state, even using it, maybe that the perception of time is altered, it passes faster, and you do not realize it. There is also a lot of talk that time is accelerating, that it is getting faster, that is physically impossible, the only interaction that can modify the movement of time, time itself does not exist, but well, contemplating our measurement of time, the only thing that can modify it is gravity, if our time was already advancing at a faster or slower point, the gravity of the planet would have already changed, it is a bidirectional interaction, you cannot modify time without modifying gravity, so no, the only thing that can be happening, is that our perception of time is changing, and that means that our mental state can be more within the alpha state, our cerebral state can be in that state for a longer period of time, then it can be that maybe because of our nutrition, or meditation, or other types of techniques, or simple evolution of the human being, we are more constantly in that frequency, and what it does is that our perception of time is faster, but time, there is no way to accelerate it, without changing gravity. Another test that you can do, and that Flanagan did with the pyramids, and with this sensor, is that the plants grew faster, he planted several vegetables, and to some, he put the sensor, and to others, he did not put anything, and they grew up to two or three times faster, and once harvested the vegetable, or whatever they were planting, the vegetable lasts longer, even the plant lasts longer, the vegetable lasts longer, even the cut fruit that you can buy in the supermarket you can put a sensor where you keep it, and it will last longer, also because it is the effect that the pyramid has, to avoid that the positive ions are attacking the natural organic matter. You can also treat water, ionize it, program it. If you want there is a video where I explain how to program it, the effect of the pyramid itself, is that it takes away everything harmful and leaves everything healthy, in other words, it regulates it and keeps it in harmony with the golden ratio of the creation of the universe, and keeps you connected in that natural frequency or in that Fibonacci ratio, which is natural. The basis of the mathematics of the universe and creation are Fibonacci, then you can use it, you can have your sensor, put half an hour for a liter of water, either inside or outside, and what it will do is improve the quality of your water, even change the taste of the food, he tested with people putting them food loaded with the sensor and food without the load and everyone chose the sensor. Flanagan said that out of 48 people, 40 always agreed that the food exposed to the sensor was better. Then he realized that those 8 people who did not recognize the difference were smokers or drinkers. After all this study on the pyramids, he realized that an arrangement on an aluminum plate with certain geometries, had the same effect. He called it the flat pyramid, my theory. My idea is that we live in a three-dimensional space, with a fourth dimension, which could be said to be time, which is not a temporal dimension. It is a spatial dimension, where all possibilities are in a kind of space, 
and when we walk from one side to the other in time, what we are doing is just experiencing those possibilities. They all exist at the same time, and they all already happened, and they all already exist, they all are, time does not exist. An experiment, or a very well-known explanation is that here in this sheet of paper, some two-dimensional beings live. And what I am going to do is, pass the pen. If I do this, this plane expands, and I pass this pen, towards the inside, what they are going to see is simply, a point that becomes bigger and bigger, and then it becomes smaller, and disappears. But it is a point, they do not see the pen, in itself, complete, for them in their perception, it is impossible to trace another perpendicular plane, what happens to us, with the fourth dimension, or with the fifth, is that we cannot draw another perpendicular vector to the three planes that already exist, that is, we have one, two, and the third, and the three are perpendicular, try to put another one more, that is perpendicular to any of those three, and you cannot, but it is an exception, of our perception of space, for these two-dimensional beings, they cannot, they only see, this left, or right front, or back and already, they cannot see an above, and below, they do not see depth, they cannot perceive it, however, it does not mean that this point is not something bigger, when they draw a point in their dimension, in reality they draw a bar, it also goes this way, so having a plate, especially a metal plate, which has a very strong electromagnetic effect, this whole spiral, in reality it is a body, that if we want to try to understand it, it is three-dimensional, but in fact it is not three-dimensional, it goes beyond the three dimensions, it would be let's say to the fifth dimension, and there is a projection, there, all dimensions exist, it is not that we travel from one dimension to another, or pass, those are already parallel dimensional planes, we can have thousands of three-dimensional dimensions, and be in one or another, or to my way of seeing, when you make a decision you jump from a three-dimensional line, to another three-dimensional space, they are unlimited, and that is the theory of the multiverse, where all possibilities exist, all are in three-dimensional spaces, but that three-dimensional space, which is our experience, like this, they live in a two-dimensional space but it does not mean that the third dimension does not exist, and it does not mean that they are not inside, they are two-dimensional beings, and it does not mean that they are not inside this three-dimensional space, they are in this three-dimensional space, but they cannot see it, there is no way for them to see it, but they are inside, just like we are in the fifth and the sixth, in the eighth, in the ninth, in all the mathematically possible dimensions, but we do not see them, we are there, so we do not see them. The only way we can experience those dimensions is not by jumping from here to another place, but by opening our eyes, and realizing that there is another dimension, it is like when they are here and suddenly, by some change in their brain, or in their perception in their reality, they manage to peek their head out of their head, they manage to look out their little head, they realize that there are three dimensions, just like us, it is not that we are going to go to another place, but, if there is the possibility of experiencing the fifth dimension, which would be after time, it would be that we can raise our heads, and already say, wow. It is a simple change of cerebral perception, and then that fourth vector, that we cannot place it now, it would be easy to see, it is simply there, like them, they cannot see the third dimension, but when they look out, they realize that it is possible to square the third vector, but while they are in 2D they cannot see it, we cannot implement that fourth vector, that is a very advanced function of vector calculation, we can analyze the dimensions through mathematical calculations, we can understand them, it has even been said that physicists have demonstrated that there are 11 dimensions, that they have been able to see them mathematically with this space, but beyond that it is only a mathematical project, it is like the I imaginary number, which is the root of a negative number, it is imaginary, we cannot fully understand it, in order to structure everything, 
including communications and all electromagnetism and all the vectors, we use that I in engineering, and we carry it around. We know how to operate it, and how it interacts with the rest of the numbers, and how it transforms into a real number, and things like that. But we don't know what it is, it doesn't exist, that's why it is an imaginary number. In general for me that is what would make the plate is generating a fifth dimensional body. Because here it is in three dimensions, although it does not seem, it is making an interaction with the energy of the universe or at a level that we do not understand. Now the coil is maintaining a flow of electrons always on the plate, and a simple magnetic field on the plate, what we said that the normal plate has a duration of three years. Because it loses its magnetic field, or its original rotation, this one does not, it will always keep its electrostatic charge, because it is like the earth, it has a potential difference, it is not as big as the earth, we would die, but there is a potential difference, because when the atoms in the air arrive here, by electrostatics they are accumulating positive charges here, and inside there is a negative charge that is generating an exchange of ions, and is generating a conversion to negative ions, trapping the positive and releasing the negative, it contains four quartz, which are amethyst, tiger's eye, citrine and lapis lazuli, those four. I leave you here links below the video of each one of them, there we have videos explaining the properties of each one of the quartz, that is what it is doing, giving that vibration to the whole device, and well in summary, which is the purpose of the video, to give you the uses of the device, you can use it to protect you from the electromagnetic interaction of the environment, to ionize you, to keep your nervous system stable, acupuncture points properly balanced, keep your fruits, your vegetables, food fresh, remove toxins from water, from tobacco, you can even test it by putting the same food with and without, and it will probably taste different. It will taste more pleasant if you are 15 minutes in contact with the device. You can use it for meditation. You use it with you to program your reality, to materialize, to visualize, the same that connects you more with that alpha state of the brain. Increase your body temperature with the TUMO energy. It gives you energy because it increases the blood flow in the body. It also makes a more efficient distribution of nutrients. Increase your immune system. At this time it is important to keep it strong, and I leave below a list of the positive effects that the sensor has. I hope you liked the video, it is the first of three, I think the second I will talk a little more about energy and how that energy flow works in the device, and the third I think it will have to do more with studies that were already done scientifically, physically and medically, some that were done at the time and other tests that you can do. I hope you liked the video. Do not forget to follow us, subscribe to the channel and activate notifications. Thanks for watching this video and we hope to see you soon.